nothing, just a broken arm. I think Danny Kaye really was a Walter Mitty. I think that all of those characters that he played were he and more. Scalpel. Sock stretcher. Sprinkling can. Cheese grater. Floor wax. Needle and number two threads. And he really was a sort of Dr. Marquis. He was a man of many, many parts and enormous interest. There you are, gentlemen. I am luckier than most because I have been able in my real life to work out most of the fantasies that people have who become Walter Mitty. There's Walter Mitty or uh, Wilma Mitty in every lady and every gentleman here. Everybody has their own fantasies, everybody has their own daydreams. Market at the 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 market
met recently at a tea party given by one of Mr. Shaw's neighbours in Hertfordshire. And when Mr. Shaw, now nearly 93, offered to show how film characters should make their entrances, he took these silent pictures. And these two great comedians then went on to delight their friends with their antics. Danny Kay fans were in full force at Madame Tussauds for the special ceremony there. There was a surprise in store for Danny, who kept trying to see his effigy behind the curtains. Oh, 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 oh open sesame! Isn't that First you put you down in the I will in a minute, honey. Dina. Is there anyone that seen her in the state of Carolina? If there is and you know her. You take a man like my father, you take a woman like my mother, who has also been called brilliant. You put the two together in a working relationship, in a marriage, and it's, those talents are highly combustible. A band, a giant reception committee, a small army of photographers, and thousands of worshipping admirers give Danny and wife Sylvia the welcome of a conqueror. Danny, I want you to tell me how you feel about the Royal Command performance. I have all. never been so thrilled in my entire life. I never wanted to do anything so badly. I'm extremely happy to be here, and I hope everything goes off well. One of the things that was wonderful about Danny was this sense of composure that he would do, is he would take the audience, spin them around, and then stop. And he would have the audience totally in the palm of his hands. The thing that, that Danny Kaye had was a kind of antic intelligence and uh, the ability to, to be real and then to just sort of lose it. I mean, he was just, he was so out of control and yet totally in control. <laughs> He had class, lots of class. First you put your two knees close up time. You swing them to the left and then you swing them to the right. Step around the floor kind of nice and light and then you, you didn't make me laugh. All of them might spread your love and all. Class has nothing to do about where you come from. I've known people who come from all the right sides of the tracks and they have no class. I've known a lot of people who were born dead poor. They had all the class in the world. I don't think that I really realized how famous he was until basically I was an adult. And I remember my mother telling me stories um, when uh, I was nuts about the Beatles. And she said, but that's what it was like when your father was at the Palladium. I think he owned it, in a way, forever. Hans Christian Andersen had been a long time dream of my father's. He was fascinated by the subject of this incredibly ugly, incredibly unhappy man who created all these lovely legends for children. And he'd started working on it in the 30s. I remember his first choice, he tried to get Chaplin to do the part. And then somebody suggested Danny. 
I'm Hans Christian Andersen, and this is an April day. The Danes were appalled that a Jewish comedian from Brooklyn was going to play their national hero. Look, I limp on a lumpy shoe, so I turn into a flying fish or a millionaire with a rocking chair and a dumpling in my stew. I'm Hans Christian Andersen, Andersen, that's who. Goldwyn was very uh, difficult. He knew what he wanted, and uh, he knew it without knowing it, because it was each time an adventure. He knew where he wanted to go, but he didn't know how to go there. So you realize it was hell for everybody. All right, no, 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 Sylvia. It was my first picture, and I had the great difficulties to speak, because I, I, I was not speaking English. I had a teacher all day long following me everywhere <laughs> to teach me. My head was like that, was terrible. But then he was helping a lot. It is possible, isn't it? Could you do it? Uh, yes. Yes, I can do it. Danny took so. on the tutorial chores of teaching her how to speak properly like a no two people, which a music goes quite quickly. And Danny would say, no two people. And he would, he would accentuate each vowel. No two people have ever been so in love. Been so in love. Been so in love. It's incredible no two people have ever been so in love. Been so as my love did love. And this is unique to positive Pico. We are the most unusual couple on No two people have ever moon such a moon. June such a June. There's a different, and softer Danny in those songs. There's a whole uh, emotional quality which wasn't in the early pictures. A swan? Me a swan? Ah, go on. He said, yes, you're a swan. Take a look at yourself in the lake and you'll see. And he looked and he saw and he said, I am a swan. Not such an ugly duckling, no feathers all stubby and brown. For in fact, these birds in so many words said, 